The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Bernard Tobin on the Soybean School, catching up with Horst Bonner, O'Mafra's Soybean Specialist. Horst, how's it going? Excellent. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the invite. I want to talk a little bit about pre-tillage here today. Um, a lot of discussion about no-till, obviously the benefits of soybeans, plant it in no-till, but do you need a little pre-tillage to make them that much better? What's your thoughts? Well, I, I've kind of come full circle on this over the years. You know, we started with just straight no-till, being convinced that that was really the way to go in terms of soil conservation and not making a mat of residue. But the more I do this, and you know, we have so many years of, of trials now, I really think there are enough benefits to a little bit of springtime pre-tillage that it makes a lot of sense. And, and where I'm standing right now is a break between two scenarios. This side, we did some pre-tillage and basically a perfect stand, beautiful level. On this side, no till, and to be honest with you, they'll probably yield almost exactly the same, but uh, a little bit uneven the stand. And that's really my complaint with this today, this exact scenario, is the stand isn't just, just what I want it to be. And it's not that the overall average is all that different. It's a little bit different, but the real problem is in those weak spots, right? And that's where pre-tillage can help you out a little bit. Yeah, you mentioned, I mean, you've got a little bit of uh, residue buildup here and there. Yeah. You might have a, a tough corn row that yes. you're riding on. Those type of things add up. They absolutely do. And, and, and what you hit on there is, you know, as much as we try to stay off the corn row, and, and you see some growers that are just perfect at it, maybe they've got an RTK system and they're able to stay off. But a lot of us, you know, sometimes you get on or there's just where the combine happened to throw more trash, you get a reduced stand in those places. And that's where that little bit of tillage really seems to shine. So in our trials overall, we have about a 10% increased plant stand, not yield, but plant stand, where we did some pre-tillage. And that's a pretty nice number if you're at that breaking point of a perfect stand or a, a reasonable stand, right, versus something that we're not happy with. Yeah. And a lot of it, Horst, is a little bit of warmth, a little bit of more level when you're planting, right? Yeah, so there's two concepts there. I think the one about it being more level is simply the, the, the idea that the combine can do a little better job. So some of the growers I talk to, they say, the main we, reason we do it is for increased plant stand, but number two, the combine does a better job, right? It's a little more level. And of course, the point you brought up there, I think it's good about warming the soil. We all know that a little black soil brings um, some more heat into the ground. And this is a perfect example right here. So these were planted a week later, and you'll, if you look closely, they're actually a little bit more advanced than these ones planted earlier into no-till. How can that be? It's only because of the, the extra heat from, from that black soil. Yep. Mm. And a final point here, and you talk about it all the time, work the ground is when it's fit. And that, that mm. speaks to pre-tillage as well. You don't want to be creating problems underground, whether it be compaction or some other things. Oh, you, you hit the nail on the head. You know, sometimes we, we fool ourselves into thinking we've done a good job because the surface is so nice and dry. And then you get a shovel and wherever, however deep you've gone, there's, there's a, a pan there and, and underneath it's, it's been too wet. We can reduce yield with pre-tillage. In some of our trials, we've done that. If it's too wet and you run a piece of equipment over in the spring, we've lost up to five bushels if it was wet, right? And on the other side, if things are done properly and the weather cooperates, on average, we, we have two bushels extra to a side like this with a little bit of pre-tillage versus the no-till side. Hey, uh, Horse, great stuff. Always great to have you on the Soybean School. Thank you very much. 